K4LN is this frequency in use. K4LN is this frequency in use. Kilo 4 Lima Echo November is this frequency in use. K4 LEN is this frequency in use. CQ, 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 Hello, CQ. It's Kilo 4 Lima Echo November calling CQ 40 meters. CQ, 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 CQ 40 meters, CQ 40 meters. Kilo 4, Lima, Echo, November, calling CQ 40 meters. K4 LEN, calling any station, anywhere. QRZ. CQ, 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 CQ 40 meters, CQ 40 meters. Kilo 4, Lima, Echo, November, Calling CQ 40 meters. K4 LEN. Calling any station anywhere. QRZ. Kilo Mike 4 Papa Oscar Papa. Papa Oscar Papa, is that correct? Roger, Roger. Kilo Mike 4 Oscar Papa Oscar. <laughs> Papa Oscar Papa, I'm sorry. K4LEN, the name here is Justin. I'm in southern middle Tennessee. Good evening to you. Okay, Justin, my uh, computer a little bit outdated here. Give me someone else, but that's fine. I'll talk to anyone, I don't care. Uh, Justin, good signal. Uh, I'll give you a report next time around. The name is Rob. Romeo Oscar Bravo to QTH in southwest Florida. Roger, Roger. Oh, good evening to you there, Robert. Uh, yeah, you're uh, five seven, five eight on me up here in Tennessee tonight. A uh, pretty good uh, copy. Sound like the band's a little noisy again tonight. Uh, let me see if I can tune this antenna and uh, get it just a little bit louder for you there. I know. I turned attenuation off. You're five nine plus ten. No problem. Your signal. I'm on about seventy or so watts. Uh, Need a little heat, just holler, I uh, turn things up, but uh, uh, there's really no need for our contact to be any stronger than that. You're 5 9 plus 10, okay? Roger, roger. Well, good deal. Yeah, I'm up, uh, SWR is pushing about uh, 2 to 1. Uh, let me, give me one second, let me tune this thing down a little bit. I don't know, I, li I don't like seeing it get that high, but uh, give me just one second. That's a little better. Uh, it's about a uh, about a 1.2 to 1 now, so I can handle that. All right, Chris. Well, I got one name on the computer screen, and I forgot your name. I didn't write it down, but uh, the same thing happened last night to me. Which I'm not gonna lie to you and tell you a bad story, uh, but I had had a few cocktails, and I could not get the SWR down. But I'm gonna tell you something about an antenna tuner. If you bypass it, no matter what you do, it will not work. Over. I got you there. Uh, the uh, I got a uh, it's a MFJ 929 uh, tuner. It's one I got the automatic tuner, and it does a pretty good job for me. Um, I don't know. I'm using a, a 991A with a off center fed dipole. And uh, most of the time, on 40 meters, uh, you know, without the tuner, it's uh, my SWRs just barely move. Uh, we've had some rough weather up here the last few days, and it's, uh, I guess I got a little bit of ice built up on the antenna, and uh, so it drives my SWR up just a little bit. Uh, so, I don't know. I, I like it to be like it normally is and just barely move, but I can't get it down that low with the ice on it there, Roger. 
Okay, well, I live in South Florida. I'm not going to be in any help to you at all about that uh, ice deal. Uh, we haven't even seen ice since 1988. Uh, so I have no idea to help you with that. But Yeah, it is nice to have a very low SWR. Um, anything under 2 or whatever, 1.5 or something. But the lower it goes, the better you are. Uh, but what I was saying uh, last night, I fought it and fought it and fought it because, like I said, I had a few cocktails late. And I couldn't get it to straighten up. It was like one five, one six. Uh, but I was bypassing the, the entire tuner the whole time of it. Yeah, Roger that. Um, I don't know. That I've I've read the book a little bit, like not totally through it, <clears throat> about this tuner, and it'll do a whole lot. Like it's got. Uh, I think it says like 2,000 uh, preset memories that I could uh, save to this thing, and and to my understanding, if you save the memory to it, um, you know, whenever you go and it clicks over there and, and shows what frequency you're on, that it will just uh, it automatically go to where it's saved to. I uh, don't have to go through the the tuning sequence or whatever you want to call it, but. I don't know. Uh, looks like maybe tomorrow I'll be off most of the day, so that might be something I tackle tomorrow there. Uh, but yeah, it does a pretty good job. Uh, as far as I can tell, as long as if I cut this tuner off, it it uh it just you know it it does nothing. It's like a pass through. Uh, but I could be wrong there. Uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but. Yeah, it's a it's a pretty nice tuner though. I I got it from a good friend of mine. He sold it to me for a good price, and uh, it's served me well so far. Okay, make sure I have everything correct. Kilo four, Lima Uniform November. I think that's right. Cam four P O P. And uh, name is Rob here. And I need to get yours again because I'm doing paper tonight. No computers on because I'm going to go to bed here pretty quick. But uh, any of them, uh, my suggestion would be to, uh, you know, when you're making a lot of changes, keep the power a little bit on the low side. You know, don't don't be robbed of the legal limit on the tuner. Uh, you know, just take it, take it easy. So don't arc or anything, because some of them will. Uh, you know, just kind of give it a break and then go back to jump your power back on, uh, you know, when you're not making an adjustment. And if you got a antenna analyzer, you can feed that to it and get all your numbers already in there, uh, which is basically what I do with a manual tuner. Uh, whatever I'm using, I'm using to put the antenna analyzer on it, tune it up, slide down, and go back to that frequency over. Yeah, Roger that. Um, that's what I was doing uh, on, uh, I had a, uh, what is it, a, uh, I forget the numbers on it, but the old MFJ manual tuner with the dials and everything. That's what I did have in here, and I got a mobile set up, so I moved it. Well, I got this tuner for my mobile set up, but I don't know. For some reason, uh, uh, I must not have a good ground out there. This tuner will not tune my mobile set up, so I uh, used the old manual tuner for it, and then I brought this one in the house. Uh, but my call sign is Kilo 4 Lima Echo November, K4LEN, and uh, the name here is Justin, and uh, I'm in Lawrenceburg, Tennessee. That's uh, southern middle Tennessee. I'm about 80 miles south and a little bit west of Nashville, and about 20 miles north of the Alabama-Tennessee line there. Still might have read it. Kilo 4, Lima, Echo, November. Is that right? QSL, you got it. Okay. Well, some of my stuff's out there here. I'm not using the internet. I'm using up uh, the thing. Hey, so, one more time, give me your name and I'll write it down. Over. All right. It's Justin, Juliet Uniform, Sierra, Tango, India, November. Just in time. Okay, Justin. Well, let's say. It's getting late now. I forgot a bunch of stuff. Got a lot of crap going on here. Uh, anyway, so what part of Tennessee? Uh, I'm familiar with Northeast Tennessee. No, Northwest Tennessee. What part of Tennessee are you in? Over. 
I am uh, right in the middle of the state, uh, down at the bottom. Like I said, I'm about 80 miles south of Nashville, and about uh, I'm 80 miles south and just a little bit to the west of Nashville, and then uh, about 20 miles north of the Alabama-Tennessee line. Okay, you're you're getting near my favorite part of the world. I tell people this all the time. Uh, my favorite place in the whole world is L.A. and Lower Alabama. But I spent a winter in northeast, north east, northwest Tennessee, uh, right up 20, uh, 75 in Kentucky. And uh, there ain't nothing to do there, but I had a good time for about four or five months of it. Yeah, Roger that. Yeah, it's a nice part of the state over there. And uh yeah, the uh the XYL's uh, father actually lives uh, over there kind of uh in between Knoxville and Chattanooga, a little small town. Uh, uh it's right in the edge of Sweetwater, Tennessee. Sweetwater, Venora. Um I think they actually got a Venora address, but yeah. Uh, they live over there, and uh, uh, but yeah, I know exactly where you're talking about over there. Uh, well, I'm familiar with it. I don't know the place real well, but um, there's a there's a mountain over there, and I forget what it's called. Um, uh, I had the name of it on the tip of my tongue, and now it's gone. Uh, I can't even think of it over there. Um, kind of north on 75 north of uh knoxville uh, almost to kentucky actually okay uh kilo kilo four leave a uniform november camp for a psv um that's where i was at probably at ride royal blue uh ain't very big i mean pretty big but ain't very big and we lived all around there and there's no towns there's a little juke joiners i call them juke joiners a little place to get a beer and a few little towns, but uh, it's a, a four winter uh, off road mountain called Ride Royal Blue. Is that what you're talking about, Eddie? Yeah, I think that's around somewhere over there. I've never been to actual Ride Royal Blue, but I've heard a lot of good about it. If you get a chance, my friend, you need to go. I take the kids, uh, they got really laid out nice. Uh, if you got a 10-year-old or 12-year-old on a four-wheeler, there's a trail. You know, they got them all color-coded. Uh, let's say the A trail is for beginners. You'll end up in the same spot. You know, you'll go around, you end up there. And I see how the kids get better and whatever. They got trails and they got trails that make a grown man uh, cry. Uh, but you'll still end up in the same spot. And you can't get lost. If you're going uphill, you're going south of the mountain. You're going down here, you can come down to the road. Yeah, Roger that. I got you there. Uh, well, Rob, I'm uh, I'm live streaming on YouTube tonight. Uh, if you'd like to see how you sound down here in Tennessee or up here in Tennessee, uh, Tennessee is up here from Florida. But uh, if you'd like to see how how you sound up here in Tennessee, uh, you can find me on uh, YouTube. K4LN Radio, and uh, click on tonight's live stream, and uh, you use my first contact tonight there, Roger. Kilo 4 len Cam for PFP. Uh, okay, well, what well, red light, dude, I got uh, a bunch of EQ equipment here that, uh, actually, just the day I got it, my headphones quit, so I've not been able to tune any of this up. I would love to hear that recorded. And uh, if you got an email or something here next week or two, uh, but it's not a big deal. I just need to get some headphones and get it, you know, where I can. Uh, you just can't tune this up without hearing yourself over. Okay? Yeah, Roger that. Well, uh, this would be perfect for you. Um, like I said, it's uh, it will be on YouTube. Uh, you can go back and view it any time you'd like to. And. Uh, I started something new. I'm going to start putting our uh, QSO times in the description so uh, the people that didn't want to go and watch the whole video, they could go and uh, find their QSO real easily and uh, and uh, get a good idea how they sound here at my location there. Yeah, that would be really cool. But you understand, you just can't turn some of this stuff on and so, uh, 
I mean, I've got the uh, the rig so messed up trying to use the microphone I'm using. Um, I don't know where to start out. I don't know where to get the rig set back up because I am using the 7610 for the Hilo direct mic 7 whatever it is, 781. So I got everything kind of crazy. Uh, so to turn the EQ and the equalizer, it's going to make a mess. So I got to start all over. I got to figure all that out. So a new learning process, start at the beginning. So yeah, you understand over. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I know exactly what you're talking about. But yeah, uh, I try to get on here every night uh, somewhere around this frequency, uh, a little bit up or a little bit down of it, wherever I can uh, get in there. Uh, but yeah, anytime, just jump on in here with me, and uh, we'll uh, we'll get that thing dialed in. Like I said, uh, you can play with it and uh, listen to it and uh, see exactly. Get it sounding exactly like you want it to there. Yeah, I just, I just want it to sound good. That's all that matters to me. Anyway, my friend, I'm going to let you go. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Before L E N K M 4 F E F E. Still bring me in, my friend. Say 7 and I'm going to let the little dog out of it. All right, Rob. I appreciate the uh, cue so. I enjoyed it. And I uh, look forward to working you again here in the near future. KM4 POP K4LEN 73 is my friend. Till next time. Chad C, sir. This is Kilo 4 Lima Echo November calling CQ 40 meters. CQ, 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 CQ 40 meters. K4LEN calling any station anywhere. QRZ. CQ, 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 CQ 40 meters, CQ 40 meters, Kilo 4, Lima, Echo, November, calling CQ 40 meters, K4, LEN, calling any station, anywhere, QRZ. November 2, Lima, X-Ray, Lima. November 2, Lima, X-Ray, Lima. Good evening, it's K4LEN, name here is Justin, I'm in uh, southern middle Tennessee, good evening to you. Alright, very good Justin, nice to meet you, of course, I don't believe you've worked before. Uh, name here is Bob, Bravo Oscar Bravo, and I'm located in New Jersey, how are you? Doing pretty good, uh, we've uh, been out sledding today, we've had some pretty nasty weather. Uh, but makes for good sledding. Uh, we're uh, we've had a lot of. They're calling for a little bit of ice and uh, a pretty good amount of snow, especially for this area. I say a pretty good amount of snow, but uh, you know, three to five inches of snow. And uh, we ended up with uh, a bunch of sleet. That's all it done is sleet for the last two days. Where today it's been all right, but uh, yeah, it's been pretty nasty. It's. Uh, all the roads besides the main highways are just a solid sheet of ice basically and uh, but we got out took the kids and uh, went sledding for a little while tonight kind of getting tucked in getting back warm and uh, getting settled in for the night there okay very good yeah i know a lot of the southern states are getting hit with the cold weather and uh, you know, uh, i know georgia was pretty cold i thought we were there the other night and uh talked to somebody out in texas uh, Yeah, roger that. Well, uh, current conditions here is 14, feels like 5, and uh, like I said, it's uh, uh, just nasty. Uh, 
the, the ground's covered with sleet, roads are covered with sleet, and uh, I don't know, it's uh, too cold for my likings. Um, I was under a uh, winter weather advisory again this evening. I think it's done expired though. Uh, it snowed a little bit. We may have had a, a dust in the snow on top of the uh, all the sleet and everything, but yeah, it's uh, I don't know. I think uh, tomorrow evening, tomorrow night, they're calling for another round of snow here. So um, we'll see what happens. I don't know. We're uh, we're not used to this kind of weather down here, so uh, it's just about shut the town down. And uh, I don't know. It's uh, I think people getting a little stir crazy now. So you're seeing more people out and about, but it's. Uh, uh, it's been pretty rough on us down here, not used to the weather there, Roger. Oh yeah, Roger, Roger. Yeah, here from a climate that uh, doesn't usually deal with this. Uh, you know, A, you're not uh, used to it, and B, uh, usually the municipalities or the states are not really geared up to, uh, to handle it. Uh, I know Texas is a prime example. I used to work many years ago back in the 80s for uh, Radio Shack, and we were routinely uh, on the phone with Fort Worth. And uh, many times during the winter, we would get a, uh, well, I can't say many times, but a few times during the winter, we got uh, notified, don't bother calling Texas today. They got six inches of snow, and they closed uh, they closed down the building. So, uh, you know, and, and for us up here, six inches of snow is, is almost a flurry. So, <laughs> but, uh, so, you know, we're used to it, have the plows and all that stuff, but I, I guess the Fort Worth didn't. So, uh, but yeah, I can understand that. Why invest the money in something that you're going to use once every 10 years, uh, you know? But, uh, yeah. You'll get through it, and uh, look, look at it this way. You get to do a little bit of sledding. That might not be something that you get to take the kids to do that often, so at least they had some fun with it. Uh, but, yeah, so that's the story here. Everything else is good. I hope you and the family are staying safe down there, and uh, hope you get the vaccine as soon as you can. I know I check every day looking for an appointment, but uh, they're all booked solid right now. But... Uh, uh, you know, we got to do what we got to do with this, I guess, and just get through it. Uh, back over to you, Justin, and to LXL. Yeah, Roger that. Uh, I don't know if you turned on some power that to go around, if uh, the band just kind of cleared up a little bit, but you went from about a 5 by 5 up to about a 5 over 10 on that go around. Uh, nice sounding setup you got there. What, uh, what radio are you running tonight? Okay, so no, I did not turn on any power. I don't have that. Uh, I'm running 100 watts. Uh, you also, by the way, came up on, uh, this round and the last round uh, from initially, so yeah, the band changed a little. Our radio here is the Yaesu FTDX 3000. Uh, microphone I'm using is an older D104 uh, that I took the amplifier and cartridge out of and put a dynamic element in it and uh, use that on a few different radios because uh, I just kind of like the old D104s. And uh, so that's what I'm using for a microphone. Uh, the antenna is a uh, dual band 40 and 20 meter dipole, uh, single wire with loading coils. Uh, and it's up in my attic, uh, believe it or not. Um, where I live, I live in a waterfront community, and I don't have any trees in my yard to string antennas from, and uh, I don't really want to be an eyesore in the neighborhood and put up a tower. So uh, I've been using this indoor antenna for about the last 12 years, and uh, it's basically a full size on 20 and a loaded antenna on 40. I believe it's somewhere around 48 feet long, and uh, my attic is 55 feet wide, so uh, I'm able to get it up there. And uh, I guess it's probably 21, 22 feet in the air since it's a two-story house, but uh, that's the setup over here, just running 100 watts. Back to you, Justin. Well, Roger that. Well, it's doing you a good job tonight. Uh, nice, clean, sounding audio. Uh, sounds really good. Uh, I'm running a Yaesu 991A uh, out to an off-center fed dipole. Uh, I guess I got a little bit of a uh, little ice on the antenna. The SWR run a little bit higher than usual. I had to well, I, it wasn't high enough that I really needed the tuner, but I went ahead and tuned it anyway to get it down there a little bit farther. But, um, but yeah, it's uh, it ain't a whole lot, but it does a pretty good job, um, especially uh, the band conditions is uh, when they cooperate with us. But uh, we know how that goes. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, 40 is a funny band. I mean, all of them can be, but 40 especially. Uh, like this go around, you were down a little bit. You were about a 5.5 five to 5.7. Five, I mean, perfectly readable, but, uh, you know, down from your last transmission. So, yeah, the band's playing games. 
Um, yeah, no, listen, 991 is an awesome little radio, and it sounds excellent. You have very nice audio and, uh, like I said, perfectly readable. And, uh, yeah, you don't need really more than 100 watts. I mean, sometimes it helps, but, uh, you know, uh, for the most part, you can have a lot of fun in radio just running 100 watts. Uh, I would like to get an amplifier at some point, but I think I need to get an antenna outside and a little further away from me if I'm going to start running more power through it. Because uh, pretty much as it stands now, I, I guess from where the antenna is to where I'm sitting, because, you know, I'm not actually on ground level, right? The house is a few feet up off the ground at all. It's probably 17 feet above my head. And uh, so I don't think I want to run more than 100 watts that way. But uh, it works. So, yeah, that's the story. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I do like the 991. Um, I, can, I have a 7300 also, the ICOM. I considered both of them. And uh, I actually spoke with uh, one of the guys out at the Gigaparts who uh, used to live in New Jersey and uh, was in the club I belonged to. And uh, he was a uh, one of the online chat reps for Gigaparts. And then they offered him a full-time job down there in Alabama, so he moved down. And uh, when I bought the radio, I called him because he has both of them personally. And I said, uh, what do you think, Steve? What should I get? And he said, well, if you don't care about the VHF and the UHF, you know, go with the, go with the 7300. Uh, if you want the others, uh, you know, buy the uh, 991. They're both great radios. So I took his advice and got the 7300 because uh, I, I have other radios here with the, uh, with, you know, 2 meter and 440. So I didn't need to uh, duplicate that. But uh, I still look at that radio and want one, you know. Uh, that's how I ended up with the 3000. I mean, I didn't need this radio. I just started looking at it online, and I said, you know what? I kind of like it, so I'm going to get it. So <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes I do crazy things. But, uh, hey, listen, it's a hobby. You're supposed to spend money, right? Back over to you, Justin, N2LXL. Yeah, Roger that. Uh, that's exactly right. And uh, it's something that's easy to do. Uh, me, personally, I live about an hour and 15 minutes away from Gigapart, so uh, I try to go down there a couple times a month. And uh, I've probably been down there 10 times at least since I've got my license. And uh, I've come out of there one time and not spent money. Uh, and that was just because they didn't have what I was going down there for in stock. So, uh, yeah, it's a, I have to talk myself out of going a lot of times because most of the time I spend at least $200 every time I go in there. And, and uh, yeah, it gets me in trouble. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's easy to do. Yeah, I'm, uh, where I live, I'm probably about, I'm going to say, no more than an hour and a half also, probably a little bit closer to the uh, HRO store in, uh, in Wilmington, Delaware, because uh, I think I can get to the state line going south about an hour from me, and then it's probably 10 minutes or so into Delaware. So uh, I could take a ride down there, and uh, actually, if I buy something large again, I probably will, because if I drive to Delaware, I won't have to pay sales tax on it. In New Jersey, they get me for 6.5%, so... Uh, you know, it might be worth a drive on a big item, save a few hundred dollars. But, uh, yeah, so, but uh, that's the story on that. And so, uh, but I have not been there yet. I really would like to. You know, it's it's it's, it's a shame we don't have more ham stores around, but obviously that's uh, it's kind of a, I don't know, a small community, so to speak, compared to the rest of the uh, the rest of the country. So they can't have too many stores, I guess, or they wouldn't really make money. But what are you going to do? Anyway, that's the story here. Nothing else is new and exciting. Uh just uh, getting up every day and going to work until I can retire next year and uh, looking for some place to move, some place down south probably. I'm looking at, uh, well, I'm not really looking yet. I'm, I'm kind of toying with the idea of both South Carolina and, uh, and Florida, but uh, I'd like to find a place on the water because I'm used to that, and uh, I like having my boat tied to my dock in my backyard, so uh, it makes it real convenient when you want to go out fishing. So, uh, and once you live that way, it's kind of funny. I mean, I've, I've, uh, I'm 61 years old, and although we did come, we, we call the area that I live in the Jersey Shore or down the shore. And uh, I always came here as a kid, but I never lived here. I've only lived here for about 20 years. But uh, once, you, once you live that way, it, it, it's hard to not have water in your yard. It, it's, it's kind of funny how your mind changes and you say, no, i got to have this. <laughs> Back over to you, Justin, N2LXL. Yeah, Roger that, Bob. Uh, know what you mean. Uh, something else you might look into uh, right here in my area, uh, southern Middle Tennessee, or Tennessee, or northern Alabama. Uh, actually, right here in Tennessee, a lot of people move down here. The the weather is uh, normally pretty mild, and uh, you know in the summertime it gets hot, a lot of humidity, but. Uh, uh, we got lots of water, lots of rivers, lots of creeks, and uh, a lot of people like it because the taxes is a little bit cheaper here than a lot of places. Uh, but 
I think it's what they say. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, uh, that's something else you might could look into. Uh, but Bob, I'm live streaming on YouTube tonight. If uh, you'd like to see how that uh, 3,000 sounding down here in Tennessee, uh, you can check out my YouTube page. Uh, it's K4LN Radio. And uh, you're my second QSO on tonight's live stream. And uh, get a good idea how you sound down here in Tennessee. Sorry for the delay. I was typing that into the uh, computer. I had to turn around to do it. Uh, I haven't brought it up yet, though. So. Yeah, I talked to a, uh, there's a guy in Florida who does the same thing. I forget his call, but I talked to him one night and uh, caught myself on, on his live stream. Uh, it, was, it was pretty neat. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm going to, uh, I'm, I'm going to, when, when I clear with you, I'll, I'll get on there and, uh, I, I mean, it'll, I assume it'll probably be a video up there when it's all done that I can replay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it should be up there from here on out. Um, yeah, I'm uh, 31 minutes into it right now. Uh, I think maybe around 20 minutes into it, give or take. That's about when our QSO starts. So, uh, yeah, uh, if you don't want to watch the whole video, it, it's a good place for you to start at, right around in that area. Maybe give or take a minute or two. But uh, I've, I've tried to start writing down my QSOs, the times, into the video. That way I can post them in the description so so people can go back and find exactly what they're looking for there. But uh, uh, just started it, so I had to remember to write them down. But, yeah, uh, it quite possibly could have been uh, Whiskey 7 Hotel Union, Alex. Uh, he's the uh, one that kind of got me started. It was kind of my inspiration, and uh, he actually come and... Uh, uh, done a, I forget what it's called, where you share your computer with them, and he kind of come in there and helped me channel my audio into uh, the software that I use and uh, show me show me the ropes of it, if you will. He, he done me a, uh, a big favor, you know, and uh, spent some time with me and kind of give me some pointers, help me out, and uh, I was really appreciative of it. But, uh, He's a real good dude, if that's who you're talking about. Uh, but yeah, I kind of, I kind of started this channel uh, mainly to uh, help other operators uh, get an idea how their equipment is performing. Uh, you know, they, uh, if they wanted to make changes, got a new antenna, um, you know, anything that they change and want to see the uh, uh, the difference in it, you know. They come over here and uh, get a good idea how they sound here in Tennessee. Uh, that and uh, kind of helping uh, show the general public the capabilities of our hobby. Uh, a lot of people don't know, you know, we can sit here in our chair and talk around the world. And uh, some people think that's pretty cool, and some people say, well, I can just pick up my cell phone and do the same thing. But, uh, uh, just kind of try to push the hobby a little bit and uh, show people that, you know, may not know, you know, that you can do things like this. Yeah, okay, Roger, Roger. Yeah, I believe it was Alex down in Florida, now that you mentioned his name. Um, and, uh, yeah, seems like a real nice guy. I don't know him personally. Just spoke with him on the air and looked at uh, some of his videos and, of course, the one that uh, my audio was in. And I will definitely check out yours as well. And, yeah, no, it's definitely a nice thing to do. And, uh, you know, uh, pretty much what you said about uh, people with our hobby is, is true. I mean, some people, uh, honestly, a lot of people I mention it to don't even know what it is. They say, oh, is that is that CB radio? And i got to tell them, no, it's not CB radio. But, uh, you know, <laughs> and then you try and tell them. But uh, it's some, sometimes it just falls on deaf ears, and they say, so what? And, uh, you know, that's what it is. But, yeah, you know, I, I guess we get as many converts as we can, and the rest uh, we can't get them. But uh, so that's the story. All right, well, listen, it's been uh, really nice to uh, make your acquaintance tonight, and I'll let you uh, move on and, uh, you know, get a few more contacts so that other people can uh, maybe watch your live stream and uh, see how they sound as well. And uh, so you and your family stay safe, uh, you know, and uh, get through the cold weather uh, safely and don't go sliding into anybody with your car. That's not a good thing to do. And uh, uh, hopefully we'll catch up again on the air sometime. So uh, appreciate the QSO, and uh, stay safe, my friend. K4LEN, uh, Justin in uh, Tennessee, uh, November 2, Lima, X-ray Lima, 7-3. We'll catch you later. 
All right, Bob. I appreciate you coming back to the call. I enjoyed the QSO, and I look forward to working you again here in the near future. Uh, November 2, Lima, X-ray Lima, K4LEN. Seven threes, my friend. Have yourself a great rest of your evening. Well, this is K4LEN calling CQ, CQ, CQ. CQ 40 meters, CQ 40 meters. It's Kilo 4, Lima, Echo November calling CQ 40 meters. It's Kilo 4, Lima, Echo November calling any station anywhere, QRZ. Uh, I got a station calling that's down in my noise. Uh, let's try it again. Victor United, what was the last one? Okay, see if this is right. Kilo Alpha 2, Victor United Whiskey. QSL? That's it, you got it. I got you on live stream right now. The name is Tom, and I'm in near Atlantic City, New Jersey. All right, Tom. Well, uh, I appreciate you coming back to the call. Uh, it's K4LEN. Uh, name here is Justin, and I'm in southern middle Tennessee. And, uh, yeah, you're making a good trip down here. Uh, you're about a, I can call it a 3x3, three 4x4, three, four four, somewhere around in there. Uh, you're making it in here okay tonight. Roger that. Uh, it's a great place, great place to live. Uh, I've lived here all my life. Uh, besides, uh, about three years I lived up in northern Virginia. Uh, work took me up there. I took a job right out of high school and uh, went up to Ashburn, Virginia and worked for uh, it's about three years, a little over. And uh, I enjoyed it up there, but uh, there's no place like home. Uh, I, had, I was ready to come back home, and uh, been here the rest of my life there for, uh, we'll say, uh, 32 and a half years, uh, 35 years old, so, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's where I'm at. Okay, low propagation, beautiful propagation, 40 meters. Frequency Uzi. I'm 53 now. Frequency Uzi. Hello, Frequency Uzi. Hello. Yeah, I know, this Frequency Uzi, that's good, good propagation today, beautiful. You're actually my first Tito on HF in many, many years. So, uh, you're my first Tito on my 705 with the new antenna. I love your live stream, by the way. It's pretty cool. Well, I appreciate that, Tom. Uh, yeah, they, uh, it took me some work to put all this together. Um, if you'd asked me, you know, five years ago or even last year uh, about having a YouTube channel, I'd have told you you was crazy. But uh, uh, this is just one of the little adventures I've uh, journeyed off into, and uh, I'm enjoying it. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I'm enjoying it. Uh, well, that five watts is doing you a pretty good job tonight. Uh, the band condition's not just real great, but, uh, they're not too bad either. But, yeah, five watts, you're doing a good job.
actually a little $25 special from the Amazon. Um, <clears throat> I think it's called a newer, uh, and I'm not for sure of the model number on it. I'm kind of looking to see if I can find one. Uh, but it's a little cheap $25 microphone. It's a uh, it comes with a microphone, the little uh, uh, shock mount, the boom, everything uh, for $25. And then uh, you have to buy uh, an, another $20 uh, phantom power supply for it. It's a condenser mic, so you have to buy a little power supply. And uh, uh, the wire that it actually came with, uh, it, it comes with two wires. It comes with this one right here that I'm... Uh, Nick runs down, and uh, you plug it into the phantom power supply, and then it's got another one almost just like it uh, that you go down. And uh, I've got, let me see if I can do this without making a mess. Yep, done made a mess. Um, running the Yazoo 991A, and uh, you got to get this little uh, adapter right here. Uh, it's a how or a, it was with the how stuff at the Giga Parts. Uh, but the wire that it came with would not work. So I had to buy the how uh, wire, the microphone wire. And uh, when I done that, it started working. Uh, I thought I'd almost uh, wasted my money, but uh, when I got that other $30 wire from uh, Giga Parts, it uh, started working then, and uh, it works real good. I, I really like it. Uh, I get a lot of compliments on the audio, too. You know, just to be a $25 microphone, uh, it serves me pretty good. Well, I really enjoy mine. Uh, I'm a, I'm actually a uh, Icom man. I, I, I really like the Icom radios. Uh, I bought this radio for the Shack in the Box, and uh, I don't know. I, I very rarely use it uh, on 20 me or two meters or 440. Uh, I mean, just very rarely, and. Uh, but I thought about, you know, selling it or trying to trade it in for a 7300. But I, I just I can't make myself get rid of it. I, I enjoy it too much, and uh, I'm afraid I won't like the 7300 as well as I like this one. So uh, it has found its forever home there. Try it one more time there. I think I may have lost you. I think I see an ICOM 7100 up on top of your desk there. Do you have one in there? I do. Uh, that's what I run uh, for my mobile rig. Um, I, I use it and uh, the little HF ham stick, Shark HF ham sticks. And they do a real good job. Um, they recommend whenever you put the little stinger down into the uh, the antenna part to trim it off, and I have not trimmed it off, and I think I may have burnt the antenna up. Uh, I, 40 meters is mainly what I work. I work a little bit of 20, but 40 meters is kind of my go-to band. And uh, I don't know, it just it don't work like it used to, and. Uh, uh, something's not right with it, but I'm going to try to get a, n a new antenna and and uh, try that and see if it comes back around. I'm not sure if it's that or if it's the uh, the mount that I use. I use the little, uh, um, uh, like a CB mirror mount, and um, I don't know. Something's not working right, um, so I got to uh, 
got a I'm gonna get a new antenna and uh, maybe a new mount and uh, the guts of the mount and see if that clears it up but um, I don't know I'm not sure but yeah the 7100 I really enjoy it as well it's a great radio uh, the only thing that uh, I like it but I don't like it is that the speaker is actually in the head of the 7100 and uh I mean the so the screen on it's not that big so the speaker is real small too so um when you're running mobile it's it's hard to hear you know when you have to turn it up and then when you turn it up it distorts so uh, I try to run a uh, I got some bluetooth speakers uh they're made from uh Cambridge Soundworks they're called uh, the Aunt Z or something like that I don't know uh, but they work really well. There are uh, a lot of little speakers like that you get when you hook them up to uh, HF radio. They they I don't know. They just they don't have a good sound. They distort real bad. But these man, they they sound awesome. And uh, so I normally hook that up to it, and it and it helps the problem. But it's still uh, I don't know. It's uh, I've I've got to get something i got to get a little bit better speaker or something but that's that's my only uh that's my only complaint about the 7100 Tom, you've uh, you faded out a little bit there. Uh, it it's got to where I can't hardly. Uh, I can hear you talking. I just can't hardly pull out what you're saying there. Uh, we'll try it again one more time and see if uh, we come up a little bit this time. appreciate you coming back to the call and uh if you'll uh if you like what you see over there on youtube uh, you can subscribe to the channel and um uh, hit that little bell icon down there and uh it'll let you know anytime that i go live and uh you can jump back in here and join us again another time uh, but yeah thank you for coming back to the call i've enjoyed our q show and uh yeah you can anytime you can come back and Give us a shout. We'll be glad to have you back on uh, KA2VUWK4LEN. Uh, seven threes to you, sir. And uh, till next time. All right, it's K4LEN calling CQ40 meters. CQ, 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 CQ 40 meters, CQ 40 meters. It's Kilo 4, Lima, Echo, November, calling CQ 40 meters. K4 LEN, calling any station, anywhere, QRZ. CQ, 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 CQ 40 meters, CQ 40 meters. Kilo 4, Lima, Echo, November, calling CQ 40 meters. K4, LEN, calling any station, anywhere, QRZ. CQ, 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 CQ 40 meters, CQ 40 meters. 
Kilo 4, Lima, Echo November, calling CQ 40 meters. CQ, 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 CQ 40 meters, CQ 40 meters. Kilo 4, Lima, Echo November, calling any station, anywhere, QRZ. Kilo 2, Foxtrot, Sierra, Oscar, Leon, this is the C5 Delta Oscar. Uh, Kilo 2, Foxtrot, Sierra, is that correct? Kilo 2, Foxtrot, Sierra, Oscar, uh, name is Mark, I'm in uh, Merritt Island, Florida, on the East Coast. Uh, Kilo 2, Foxtrot, Sierra, Oscar, uh, good evening, this is K4LEN, the name here is Justin, I'm in uh, Southern Middle Tennessee, uh, good evening to you. Yeah, we've talked, Justin, uh, good, how's it going tonight? going pretty good. Uh, it's kind of getting thawed out. We uh, took the kids out uh, sledding tonight, or this evening, and uh, kind of getting settled in, and uh, getting the baths and all that good stuff, and uh, I don't know, thawing out, if you will. Yeah, good for you. That's a, that's a good dad thing to do. I can remember a lot of days pulling a sled up the hill for a little one. Yeah, they had a blast. Uh, I don't believe they'll be uh, fighting sleep tonight. I believe soon their head hits that pillow, they'll be out. Uh, they played hard and had a great time, and uh, we enjoyed watching them. They, uh, I don't know, I think uh, this is the first snow we've had. You know, uh, let's see, when the little one was real little, uh, probably less than a year old, we had a a small about maybe two inch snow and uh, just enough that you could get uh, them little looks like a trash can lid <coughs> and a sled but we've not had a snow uh, you know enough to amount to anything in the last few years so uh, that was kind of the first go around for sledding for them and uh, man they really enjoyed it they played hard Oh, uh, that's fantastic, man. That's that's excellent for kids. Uh, well, I got I was raised in upstate New York, so uh, that uh, fortunately that was every winter for us. So uh, I had a lot of good memories of that. Oh yeah, yeah. That, uh, I could imagine you get lots of snow up there. Um, I know we uh, we didn't really get snow. We got a lot of sleet. Uh, you know they called for a little bit of ice. And then, uh, you know, three to five inches of snow here. And uh, ended up, it everything we got was just sleet and freezing rain. So uh, everything's got a... Or the trees, not so much. I, I guess we was kind of spared because it was sleet and it was bouncing off about everything and just land on the ground. But there's probably uh, three quarters of an inch of sleet that was on my truck out there uh, when we started off this morning. So um, that was on the truck. And then uh, the ground is, I don't know, probably an inch or so, just hard-packed sleet. I mean, it's uh, uh, it's so hard when you walk through the grass, you can't even crunch down in it. It's so hard. So um, the roads are completely covered uh, Besides the main road, the main roads, is, they done got them cleared off, but all the secondary roads, they're completely covered, and I mean, it's like a solid sheet of ice. It's uh, pretty treacherous, but uh, I don't know, we uh, we went for a little stroll earlier on it and didn't really have no trouble. Uh, I guess that old heavy dodge that I got, it's uh, it stood up there on it and went no problems. Uh, but yeah, we're we're not used to that kind of weather down here, so uh, everybody's kind of almost a state of emergency, and, and uh, uh, there's not many people out of stern. No, it's a good idea to be careful. Especially when you're driving. Yeah, they, uh, you know, uh, you know what we got here, you know, compared to northern states and stuff you know i've seen some people uh that used to live here that's working out on the pipeline or i don't know if they're still working or not they may have got shut down but uh they saying oh that ain't a real snow but uh real or not we're not used to it and uh 
It affects us. Yeah, that's exactly it. Uh, you, you give them a the 95 in human. Watch what they say then. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. Yeah, where we live, uh, to get in the 90s is kind of a rare thing in the summer. And over 70, 80, they're complaining it's too hot. Hello. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, well, it gets hot here, but, man, the humidity here is what's, what's torture. You know, uh, you get up, you know, uh, 90 degree day, and it feels like it's 100. You know, you walk out the door at 7 o'clock in the morning and break a sweat just walking to the truck because it's so humid. And uh, that's that's what's rough down here. Oh, uh, yeah, I get it. Good, <laughs> good for you, man. That's, that's a tough way to start the day. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, uh, I don't know, it ain't no joke. Uh, but most of, for the most part, you know, right here, it's, uh, the weather's pretty mild. You know, we may get two weeks of the whole year that we're, uh, freezing or below. My dad gum, I don't know what's going on with this little camera holder thing, but that thing's been giving me a fit since the last couple of days. I don't know why I won't stay in there. Bro. I use my phone for a camera for this YouTube stuff. And I got one of these little cheap phone holder tripod deals from the Walmart. And uh, it worked real good starting off, but man, the last two days, maybe three, it, I don't know. It's like my phone don't want to stay in it and it, it's aggravating. <laughs> but yeah, uh, uh, I don't know. Maybe I need to get a little bit more expensive one. I start off with a cheap one to see how it goes and so far the little YouTube Avengers going pretty decent, a lot better than I thought it would, so uh maybe time to upgrade. Yeah, good for you. Uh wish you good luck on that. Well I appreciate it and uh yeah it's uh I don't know, I I'm just trying to do different things, uh like today, we didn't work, so uh, I try to just record, uh, you know, trying to work some parks on the air. And uh, I don't know, it, uh, I done it day before yesterday, too, and everything worked out great. Uh, I used the mic that I'm using that I'm talking on right now. Uh, set it up a little bit different and used the mic on my headset for the radio and then use this where I could kind of talk over the radio and not have to key the radio up to talk and uh, it worked great uh, day before yesterday I didn't change anything I set up its own little deal where uh, like it's you can set up a scene and then you kind of add whatever you want to the scene if you will uh, in this software and uh, you know I set up uh, I call it Poda and then Poda Cuso, but uh, it's on. It's in its own little scene. That's nothing been changed. The only thing I changed is the wire coming from the uh, little phantom power supply, and then uh, you know that's nothing. Just plug, unplug it and plug the other one in. And I don't know. I recorded over an hour's worth of video this today, and. Uh, some reason this time I don't have audio on the video. Worked perfect day for yesterday, today, or it worked perfect yesterday, and today nothing. And I, I, I don't know, beats me. Uh, just working the bugs out of this thing, so kinks and bugs. So we'll get her figured out one way or the other, or we may just scratch the idea. I don't know. Yeah, that's frustrating. Uh, too bad. Go through that. Yeah, it, uh, I don't know. We'll, uh, I'll do some more playing. There goes the phone again. Maybe it'll just sit right there. Well, uh, yeah, um, just keep playing with it. And maybe, uh, maybe I get it figured out here eventually and figure out, you know, how I got to, I don't know. At this point, it's kind of a guessing game. I try this, and if it works, and I try something else if it works, and then uh, I don't know. I'll get it right here sometime or another, and uh, 
and figure out what I did right. That way I can go back and duplicate it again. Well, I hope you get it straightened out. I know it's just frustrating when that stuff happens. Same, same thing with the radio, too. But. Well, it's time to wish you 73, and uh, hope you have a good night. Good luck with your video. All right. Well, I appreciate it. Appreciate you coming back to the call, and I uh, look forward to uh, talking to you again here in the near future. Uh, let me click back over here where I can find your call sign. Oh, Kilo 2, Fox, Sierra, Oscar, K4, LEN, uh, 7-3, Stia, and uh, until next time. Yeah, same, uh, Justin. We'll we'll see uh, we'll see if we can get some contacts when I head back up north. Uh, seven three K two F S O. All right, seven three to you. Have a good rest of your evening. This is Kilo Four Lima Echo November calling CQ forty meters. CQ 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 forty meters CQ forty meters. Kilo Four Lima Echo November calling any station anywhere QRZ. Is there a Kilo Delta 2 station? November 2, Lima Delta India, Delta 2, Victor Delta Victor. Kilo Delta 2, Victor Delta Victor, is that correct? Victor, Whiskey. Victor something Whiskey, I'm sorry. Try it one more time. Kilo Delta 2, Victor Grant Whiskey. CQ, CQ, November 2, Lima Delta, India. Uh, Kilo Delta 2, Victor Grant Whiskey, is that what you said? I'm sorry. Uh, you're down my noise a little bit, but I think I got it. Victor Delta Whiskey. Oh, okay. Victor Delta Whiskey. I'll get it right here in a minute. Uh, good evening. Uh, looks like Michael from New York. Uh, K4LEN. Name here is Justin. I'm in uh, southern middle Tennessee. Good evening to you. Okay, uh, got you running 20 watts there. Well, uh, it's making it in down here in Tennessee. Um, you're, uh, I'm going to give you about a two by two on it, but uh, yeah, you're making it right in here. Uh, how do you like that? Uh, I forget how you pronounce that. Uh, Zagu, Zagu, something? I forget. How do you like that little radio? I've only had the radio for about a week, but so far so good. I think, as you can tell, with 20 watts, I need to improve my antenna situation. Okay. Well, you come up and uh, and uh, signal a little bit that time. Uh, I hear you a little bit better. Uh, yeah, they uh, they uh, they they have a lot of good to say about that little radio, uh, especially the tuner in it. They say that tuner. Uh, uh, we'll tune a wet noodle is what they say. Say it's a really good tuner built into it. Okay, you dropped back down on me a little bit that time. Uh, but yeah, it, uh, I don't know, uh, I thought about getting one of those little radios for working parts on the air. Um, I don't know, I, I still ain't ruled it out. Uh, I've got the, I, I've got a uh, local woman here, local widow woman uh, from a silent key. He had a, uh, it's a, uh, um, that mine went blank, a, uh, Elecraft K2 radio QRP rig, and uh, she's asking a really good price on it, and I thought about trying to buy it. Uh, I don't know. I, I've kind of, I'm not, <clears throat> I'm, I'm not, uh, not quite ready to pull the trigger on it. 
I know QRP, working QRP can be a lot of fun, but um, I don't know, I, it can be aggravating too. I, I can, well, I, I would think it can be aggravating. Yeah, Roger that. It uh, um, I don't know. That's uh, they got a. I don't even remember where I've gone. Man, I'm I'm terrible tonight. With I have brain fart after brain fart. But yeah, the uh, that Zygu or Zygu or I forget how they pronounce that. Uh, a lot of people they enjoy it. Say they're great radio. Um, but yeah, working QRP, I see it could be aggravating, but very rewarding. You know, when you do make that contact, uh, it make you feel good about yourself for sure. I think you came back to me that time. I, I couldn't hardly pull you out there. Um, band's kind of up and down a little bit there tonight, but uh, uh, yeah, it's kind of rough and tough on you there a little bit. Um, but yeah, I'm uh, I'm live streaming on YouTube right now. Uh, if you'd like to see how that 20 watts was making it in here in Tennessee this evening, uh, you can go check me out on YouTube at K4LEN Radio and uh, see exactly how that thing is doing down here in Tennessee. It's, uh, like I said, it's, uh, I had about a two by two on you, and uh, you may have jumped up to three by three that one time, but it's kind of, band's kind of up and down, making it, making it rough for 20 watts. Um, but I appreciate you coming back to the call, and uh, look forward to working you again when uh, the band condition is just a little bit better there, Roger. Yeah, thank you for, for taking my call. I know that your signal faded a few times. You were fading in and out, so the conditions probably aren't aren't super. Thank you again, and I will check out that video. This is KD2BW. I'll be clear with K4LEN73. All right, Michael. Um, I appreciate you coming. You up that time. I heard you just fine. That go around. Um, our our QSO started at an hour and three minutes into the live stream this evening, so. Uh, if you don't make it over there by the time I uh, get off here, it'll be up there all the time. And an uh, hour and three minutes is uh, what you need to look for there if you want to just listen to your own uh, radio. But, uh, but yeah, I welcome you to go check it out. Uh, I spent a lot of time on this, and uh, uh, it's just kind of one of them little adventures I'm going on. But thanks for coming back to the call, and uh, we look forward to working you again here in the near future. K4 or KD2 VDW and Kilo 4 Lima Echo November. 7 3 is Michael, and uh, have yourself a good rest of your evening, sir. There's Kilo 4 Lima Echo November calling CQ 40 meters. CQ, 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 CQ 40 meters. It's Kilo 4 Lima Echo November calling any station anywhere. QRZ. CQ, 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 CQ 40 meters, CQ 40 meters, Kilo 4, Lima, Echo, November, calling CQ 40 meters, K4, LEN, calling any station, anywhere, QRZ. Whiskey 4, Yankee, Echo, Echo. Whiskey 4, Yankee, Echo, Echo, is that correct? Yeah, that's a Roger. Can you give me your last, last three of your call signs, please? Yes, sir. It's uh, Kilo 4 Lima Echo November, K4LEN. Ah, oh, Roger. I'm located in Beverly Hills. First name here is Bud, Bravo Uniform Delta. 
All right, good evening to you, bud. Uh, it's K4LEN. The name here is Justin. I am in uh, southern middle Tennessee. Uh, I'm running a Yazoo 991A to an off center fed dipole, about 25, 30 feet in the air. Uh, there's nothing spectacular, but it gets the job done. Yeah, I'm running a 7300 here with a homemade dipole in the back. Uh, yeah, I'm not doing much with this thing except for getting out somewhat. Anyway, I'm happy with it. Uh, question, what's your temperature like out there? Yes, sir. It's uh, it's cold. Uh, let me back up over here to the forecast or to the weather page. 14 degrees feels like 6. Uh, we got about an inch of sleet on the ground. Uh, just nasty conditions down here in Tennessee. Yeah, it sounds that I have a buddy who lives over by Nashville, right on the border there between Alabama and Tennessee, and he said he got five inches of snow last night, and they're expecting more. Um, and his temperature was way down as well. Yeah, here in Florida, we're like 60 degrees, and it feels cold to us. I mean, we're looking for snorkel jackets. <laughs> we don't have any long clothes. Yeah, roger that. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's no doubt about it. It's cold down here. Uh, what part of Tennessee does he live? Because it sounds like he's pretty close to me. I'm about 80 miles south of Nashville and about 20 miles north of the Alabama-Tennessee line there. Yeah, hang on just a second. Yeah, that description sounds like uh, pretty close to me, which we didn't get no snow. All I got here was a lot of sleet, but... Uh, yeah, sound like he's pretty close to me anyway. He's in South Haven, if you know where that is. I've heard of South Haven, but I don't know exactly where it's at. Uh, let's see. I bet you I can find it pretty quick, though. But, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know, it's, uh, it's nasty out there, and it's cold. You know, we're not used to this, this cold down here, and, uh, we don't get down this cold very often, maybe a couple times a year, maybe three times at the most, but but yeah, it's uh it's a lot colder than what I like. Yeah, well, we had a couple of thirty degree weathers here in, in Florida and it was really cold. I mean, you know, considering the fact that Floridians we used to sixty and seventy degree weather and you know, all of a sudden it drops down to thirty, it's like wow. That's like subtropical to us. Yeah, Roger that. I could imagine. Uh, where is Beverly Hills, Florida at? Uh, let's see. We're by Orlando. We're by Tampa. We're on the west coast. Uh, we're exactly 25 minutes from the Gulf from here. Okay. I got you. Kind of down, uh, uh, what, I guess that's about a third of the way down the state, somewhere around there, a little over. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, we uh, we really like it here. This town only has two traffic lights, a Winn-Dixie, and a Ace Hardware, and a couple of restaurants, and a Dunkin' Donuts, and that's it. <laughs> so it's pretty nice living here. It's very, very quiet. Yeah, Roger that. Uh, sounds about like a um, little town I grew up in, Leoma. Uh, it's it's about like that. It's uh, well. Leoma is kind of in between Lawrenceburg and Loretta, Tennessee, and it's uh, Loretta is sounds you you just about described it right there, just uh, enough to get you by. And uh, Leoma is you know just pretty much a community in between, um, but yeah, Lawrenceburg is a little bit bigger. It's we've got uh, several little fast food chain restaurants, few uh, few nice mom and pa little steakhouse deals, and. Uh, uh, we don't have no big chain uh, restaurants like, um, you know, like a Cracker Barrel or uh, a Waffle House or anything like that. But uh, the the little mom and pa joints we got there, it's good eating. It's, uh, I don't know, it's a population about twenty, twenty five thousand 25,000 people. So uh, it's a big enough town. It's got everything you need. But uh, it's not so big that it's, you know, overcrowded. It's a, it's a great little town here where I live. Yeah, we kind of like it here. Like I said, this is like a bad boots community. Uh, closest big town to us is 30 minutes away. 
So it's pretty nice. I see you got your general license. Um, I got mine in November, I think, and then studied for the, you know, I studied for the tech, passed it, and then I went ahead and studied for three weeks and took the general. Now I'm studying for the extra. Oh, man, is that ever tough. Yeah, roger that. Um, yeah, I got my technician back in May, in the year of the corona, I call it, and then uh, got my general in September, and uh, you know, I went ahead and uh, went ahead and tried for the extra there, you know, when I took my general. Uh, but I, I don't know. It's uh, I'm wanting to go ahead and get that extra, but. Man, that's uh, looking at that test compared to that general man. That's uh, it's a pretty, pretty complex stuff in there. Um, it's gonna take more than uh, sitting down and studying the the right answer. Uh, you know the the question pool, uh, memorizing the right answers. It's gonna take more than doing that to get that extra. Um, kind of, I'm wanting to get me one of them uh, Gordon West books. I hear a lot of good things about Gordon West's book, and uh, I think that's kind of how the route I'm going to go whenever I get ready to do it. Yeah, there's another guy who's got a call sign similar to mine. His is Whiskey for Echo Echo Yankee, and he runs a um, he runs a web not a web page but a YouTube video, and there's I think there's three instructors. And they go from technician to general to extra. But the neat thing is that they go ahead and they teach you what you need to know. You, you don't just learn the questions. They actually have you learn why you're doing what you're doing. And it's really neat. I really like watching them. Um, he's really been, he's been doing this for like three years on the internet. No cost, no nothing, just come on in watch a class and sometimes I'll go in and I'll watch a class that I already watched and it's pretty funny. I sent him an email and told him what my uh, what my call sign was. He said he had to look it up on QZ, QRZ rather because he didn't believe me. I was like, really? Yeah, Roger that. I know who, exactly who you're talking about. Uh, I actually uh, started watching a few of his videos uh, whenever I, you know, got on board to take my general, and uh, when I heard your call sign, that's who I thought you were. Uh, but yeah, uh, I think they actually use the Gordon West books uh, in the the classes that they do. Um, that's kind of the background of his books. Is uh, he goes over the test pool questions, but he goes farther, like you're talking about, and explains why. Yeah, it's like this, you know. They don't just give you the answer; they tell you why it's like that. And uh, but I could be mistaken, but I think that's the books that they they use in those uh, YouTube videos. Yeah, I think they use that one. If they don't use that one, they use the uh, amateur radio book. Um, I'm pretty sure I see that one pop up, and they're up to the blue one now, and I think that's what they're using. But uh, yeah, when I got done with him after watching the journal, and I mean, I got it, uh, well, 35, I got 34 out of 35 just from watching him. Uh, now, it's kind of a set because I didn't get the 35. <laughs> but the VECs were really happy, and they liked it, so I was okay. Um, yeah, they, and he's a great guy to talk to. I mean, I send him emails every once in a while, and he sends me back things like the, um, you know, the, uh, what's it called, the band meters with the, on the back, it's got the states, you know, for if you're four or two or three or whatever. Um, so it's pretty nice, and he, he's really a down-to-earth guy. I'm really hoping to link up with him here on 20 meters somewhere. I told him where I was, and he said he was going to try, so we'll see. Yeah, roger that. Well, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, but, yeah, I'm actually uh, on YouTube right now live streaming. Um, I've kind of started an adventure, a YouTube adventure, if you will, um, recording myself uh, or live streaming myself, making contact. So you're actually on YouTube right now. Uh, if you'd like to go and, and check out how that 7300 and uh, that dipole is working up here in Tennessee, 
<clears throat> you can find me on uh, YouTube at K4LEN Radio. And uh, like I said, I'm live streaming right now, and uh, I am at an uh, hour and 20 minutes into it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, so, yeah, you can go and uh, see exactly how you sound here in Tennessee. Yeah, I'm looking that up right now. Yeah, it's uh, just kind of a little adventure I've journeyed off on. Uh, uh, one of your fellow Floridian residents down in uh, Cutler Bay, Florida. Uh, you may have heard him on 20 meters in the evenings, uh, Whiskey 7 Hotel Uniform, Alex. Uh, kind of got my inspiration from him and uh, just kind of, you know, trying to help other operators see how their equipment's performing and... Uh, uh, show the show the public uh, the capabilities of our hobby. You know, sh show them that uh, I can talk around the world and never pick up my telephone there, Roger. Yeah, Roger. Yeah, I noticed you had my screen up there. Uh, kind of like, whoa, that's me. <laughs> Which was kind of funny. I thought that was unique. Uh, yeah, right now what I've got on here looks like your radio station, 7,200,000, uh, 7,200,000, uh, and also I see uh, another gentleman down at the bottom right-hand corner. Yeah, roger that. Uh, I kind of, I got two cameras, so I got one up here facing straight on me and then the other and over here to the side. Um, the... This over here is the frequency. I use uh, Ham Radio Deluxe. I bought that software, and uh, that's kind of the uh, 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 it's kind of the you can actually control your radio through that software and never touch your radio. You can control every function of the radio, never touch it. And uh, I kind of got it zoomed in right there on the the frequency part, and. Uh, but yeah, it's uh it took me a while to put that together and uh yeah, it's uh still working the bugs out of things, but uh you know, live streaming wise I've kinda got it squared away, figured out and works good, but I try to do some recordings and uh it, it ain't turned out as good for me there. I still got some bugs to work out of it, but we'll get them and uh we'll work it all out there. Oh, yeah, it just takes some time. You know, I mean, I'd, and here's a fun one for you. I got an antenna that I call an egg beater, and you probably have never seen anything like this before in your life. This thing has, uh, at the top part of it, has folks that come out all over the place. I mean, uh, radials that come out everywhere. And then on top of that, it's got radials that come out the side of it. So it's like a vertical horizontal, but it's actually a vertical. Now, I don't know what it does with this horizontal thing, but it does from 2 meters to 80 meters. And I'm like, really? So I went ahead and I put my my uh, S, uh, my BSWR on it, and at 80 meters, I got a 17% 17, 17 feedback. So I'm not talking to anybody, just myself. But everything else is like a, a one to one all the way down until you get to five meters. And at five meters, it does the same thing as the 80 meters. So, but it's pretty wild. I mean, I've never seen an antenna like this before. Well, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, whenever I, I went to Sevierville, Tennessee, over in the uh, Smoky Mountains, and I uh, went to a ham fest over there, and uh, that's actually where I took my general. Uh, but there was a guy there, there's two guys, um, both of them had one for sale, and I almost bought it, and it almost sounds like what you're describing, it's, it was good for uh, 20 meters, and I don't remember if it went all the way up to 80 or not, I think it did though, but man, it was uh, the wildest looking antenna you've ever seen, uh, kind of like you described, uh, up at the top it had radials and stuff going everywhere. Um, I was kind of leery of it. And I didn't know about it, but man, he priced that thing to me at, at like sixty dollars, and uh, I almost bought it. But I, 
uh, I decided to pass on it. And uh, but it sounds like I should have jumped on it. Sounds like it was probably a pretty good antenna. Yeah, well this one will work fine once I get it up. I got it. Unfortunately, I put it up and just did the the uh, VSW all on it just to check it. But now I got to put it up on a pole and get it up in the air. And the thing is that I'm in the book itself. It says you can lean this against your house if you have no snow. Huh? <laughs> what about me? And uh, the other thing too is that it says don't go higher than 10 feet off the ground. So it uses the ground as a reflector apparently to go ahead and send the signal out, which sounds really cool. Is it uh? Do you have to? You don't have to run radio wires. Uh, is that correct? It, it that sounds about like. Is it about 20 foot tall? The antenna. Yes, it is. Hang on just a second. I got a book behind me. It's got the name of it, and I'll get that for you. Yeah, I think the one he had. I'm thinking it was the MFJ, but I could be wrong. And uh, but yeah, man, it was it's, uh, up at the top. It almost looked like a snowball. Uh, all the stuff going on with it, and uh, I can't remember to save my life. And it may not have been AMFJ. I just kind of, uh, for some reason, I was thinking that it's that's what it was. Yeah, this one's an MFJ 1799 is what it is. Uh, so if you get a chance to look that up, but it goes from two to eighty meters apparently. All right, I'm going to look it up right now, and uh, I think just, uh, uh da, 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 da. yeah, I think that's it, but I don't remember down at the bottom, uh, I don't remember the bottom having the, uh, the horizontal thing with the radials on it down at the bottom, but yeah, I think that's the antenna. Yeah, I can't wait to see how good it does. I mean, that's well, I had it on the, uh, well, I had it on my uh, porch. And I had it leaning up against the porch because it's all wood. And while I got on there, I made two contacts in 20 meters and talked to Cuba. <laughs> so I guess the thing's working okay. I mean, I'm not going to complain. It sounds good. <laughs> well, that's all that matters as long as it works and gets out. Uh, yeah, that's that's awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's the antenna, but I don't remember it having the uh, the horizontal uh, thing. I'm showing it on the, uh, the live stream right now. The bottom of it, I don't remember that part being there. But uh, they they had one that was uh, put together, and then another one that was all uh, disassembled, um, ready to pack up, throw it in your truck, and go. And and it you know it may just uh, it may just had that part took off of it for uh, you know just because they didn't want to put it on there but yeah I'm pretty sure that's the same antenna and uh, yeah man that's that's pretty good that's uh, I might should have jumped all over that one I just wonder how uh, how it how it does uh, especially like up on 80 meters. Yeah, well, there's some adjustments up there on the top. If you see where the top hat is, there's a number right there next to it. That's how you set your 80 meters up on the top. Uh, and the bottom part doesn't come with that, uh, what do you want to call it, the straight out radials like the top. It doesn't come with that. Uh, and that bailum, you got to get that bailum. That bailum cost me $56, and I had to wait three months to get it. Yeah, that's uh, I think, I think that one he had, uh, I think it was it had that ballum and that, it uh, I don't know, it may not have. That's been, uh, I've slept since then, so uh, I could be lying to y'all together, but yeah, that uh, I remember seeing it and I thought, what in the world is that? And he told me, you know, it was good for. Uh, two meters all the way up to 80, and uh, but yeah, that's that's pretty cool. I I'd about forgot about that actually. 
Yeah, like I said, I got to call, I got to talk to Cuba and uh, I'm trying to think of the other place that I talked to. Um, uh, not British Columbia, I did that on a long way. I'm trying to think of the other one, but there was another country that I talked to. Uh, if you look at my uh, QRZ page, you'll see where I've talked to a couple of foreign countries. Not many, I'm still working it. Uh, but I did go ahead and talk to a foreign country uh, I think it was Italy on it as well, and that was pretty cool. I enjoyed that. So it made me feel like, okay, so I can get this thing working because I got it from a silent tier, and somebody had taken it apart, and I picked it up, and it was all in pieces, and I had to put the whole thing together, and there were parts missing and everything else. But, you know, it, it's a challenge, but that's what our hobby is all about, trying to solve problems that nobody else knows about. That's exactly right. That is exactly right. It's uh, it's all about uh, trial and error, uh, building, you know, uh, whatever's going to work for you, and uh, a lot of experimentation. Uh, that's for sure. Well, Bud, I'm going to see if I can ease around, make a few more contacts than that. Uh, while you're there at the uh, YouTube's channel, you can, uh, if you'd like, you can subscribe to the channel. And uh, click that little bell icon, and uh, you do that, it'll let you know any time that I get on here and go live, and uh, come back in here and join us again another night. Uh, but I'm going to ease around here and see if I can make a few more contacts. Whiskey 4, Yankee Echo Echo, Kilo 4, Lima Echo November. Uh, I say 7 3 to you, sir, and I hope you have a great rest of your evening. Hey, Roger, you too. It's been great talking to you. Good, good juice, uh, really good. You stayed like a 5'9 the whole way through, which is really amazing. I've already subscribed to you. I've already hit the bell. Did that when I first opened up the thing, so I appreciate it, and I hope you get the antenna if that's the one you want. Anyway, stay warm. <laughs> Whiskey for Yankee, Echo Echo. I'll be clear with Kilo 4, Lima Echo November. Thanks, I appreciate it. Yes, sir, and we are going to try to stay warm, try the best we can. I appreciate you being there. Uh, but this is K4LEN calling CQ 40 meters. CQ, 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 CQ 40 meters. K4LEN, call in any station, anywhere, QRZ. CQ, 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 CQ 40 meters, CQ 40 meters. Kilo 4, Lima, Echo, November, call in CQ 40 meters. K4LEN, call in any station, anywhere, QRZ. CQ, 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 CQ 40 meters, CQ 40 meters, Kilo 4, Lima, Echo, November, calling CQ 40 meters, K4, LEN, calling any station, anywhere, QRZ. CQ, 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 CQ 40 meters, CQ 40 meters, it's Kilo 4, Lima, Echo, November, calling CQ 40 meters, CQ, 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 CQ 40, CQ 40, K4, LEN, calling any station, anywhere, QRZ. Nothing heard, nothing heard. We'll start wrapping this thing up. Going there, uh, got a little, little piece of pizza calling my name. I'm not eating nothing for supper tonight, so, uh, old stomach growling a little bit. It's about that time. I say last call, last call, last call. It's K4 LEN. Calling last call for CQ, 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 CQ 40, CQ 40. K4 LEN. Last call. Calling any station, anywhere. QRZ.
Well, I don't want you to feel lonely out there, so I'll jump in here and say good night to you anyway. It's Kilo Golf 6 Yankee Victor Delta. Kilo Golf 6 Yankee Victor Delta. Hey, I'll stick around as long as I got somebody to talk to. I'm just uh, it's getting rough and tough when nobody answering me back, so uh, I think when you come back that time, I had a couple, but hey, uh, good evening to you, Hayden. Uh, it's Justin again. I think we worked the other night. Uh, welcome back to the uh, live stream, sir. Good evening. Yeah, good evening. We, uh, uh, I, I had you on the, your YouTube open and the, uh, listening to you, because, but I had a local OES staff here uh, came up at uh, 1900 Pacific time, and so I uh, just kind of turned everything down, but then I was reading the mail and watching you on the, while you were talking to that last guy about the antenna and stuff, so I kind of turned the volume up just a little bit, but I heard you saying you were not getting any action and might be ready to shut it down, so I thought before you do that, I'll uh, key up and uh, uh, just wish you a good night. Well, I sure appreciate it. I appreciate you coming back. Uh, yeah, it's uh, getting a little slow. I normally, as long as somebody answers me back, I'll stay. I've had some of these things go as long as three hours before. But, uh, but yeah, as long as I got somebody to talk to, I'll come back and keep going. But if she starts getting slow and start having to call CQ very many times, I'll, uh, I'll wrap it up. But, yeah, man, appreciate you coming back to the call. I uh, always enjoy working you. I uh, always enjoy pulling up your QRZ page and, and checking out your mobile rig. Well, you got a nice setup all the way around. Good uh, good fix station going on, nice setup. Uh, I don't know, I, I've been looking at them uh, um, high-Q antennas, and, uh, man, just looking at yours makes me want one even more there. Well, your uh, signal pops back and forth uh, the strongest you've been in the past since we started talking is about S6. But you've been down at S2, S3, and then uh, something happens in the atmosphere and you all of a sudden get clear up on uh, around S6. But uh, your signal's just not as strong as it was the other night. But, uh, you know, and then, then again, I don't know how well I'm hitting you either. Well, you coming in pretty good on me. Uh, I had you uh, S7, S8, and uh, at the lowest you've just been, uh, you know, about a S, uh, about a S6, I guess. Uh, but man, yeah, you got a great signal in here. Uh, pretty good there. Yeah, the conditions tonight is a little rough. Uh, they're not as bad as it has been, because uh, you know I'm still working California on 40, so that's uh. That's always good, but it's uh, I've seen better, that's for sure. Well, I had some time at lunch this mo this afternoon or this earlier today, and I was uh, in the F-250 and I uh, got on 40 meters uh, uh, 7272, and uh, talked to some guys there around 11, 11:30, and that our time. And then uh, at noon, the Jefferson uh, noon net, I checked in there briefly before I went back to work uh, at seven, uh, 7204. And uh, on that truck, I don't have any amplifier or anything in. And they, both of them said I was about 20 over 9. And they're up in, uh, one was in Utah and the other one was up in uh, uh, Washington, East Washington. So uh, the band conditions were pretty good uh, on 40 meters earlier throughout the day. But uh, this evening I can see it going up and down and up and down. Go ahead. Yeah, roger that. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not been just terrible tonight. Uh, I worked... Uh, couple of guys on QRP, uh, one was running uh, just five watts up in uh, 
I think it's New York. It may have been New Jersey. New York and New Jersey. And uh, I mean, he just wasn't a, a great signal on me, but he, you know, he made it in here. We made the cue so. And uh, but yeah, he was he was in and out, but I mean, it's still five watts down here. That's still pretty good. Pretty good, you know. Uh, so it, it's been better, but it's been worse as well. Uh, hey, is uh um. When we talked the other night, was that your wife that uh come back in and uh hollered at me a couple of QSOs later? QSL, yeah. Yeah, she came over here, sat down and uh, pushed the pedal and uh, called you and uh, got her uh, 30 seconds of fame. Well, that's awesome. Uh, my my girlfriend, she's uh, been trying to get her technician. And uh, she 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 likes the radio, and uh, man, that's awesome that uh, you and your wife can uh, both ham operators. That's that's cool. Uh, I hope that she she gets hers. She knows the material. She just uh, I don't know. She she get in there taking a test and goes to second guessing herself. So um, I think she's failed it eight times. Just missed it by one or two questions every time. But um, I think maybe this coming up weekend, I think she might go test again. we got a test coming up, so maybe it's next weekend. Either way, uh, I'm, I'm hoping she uh, gets it worked out this time and, and gets that ticket and make me pretty happy. I'm proud. I'm proud of her for, uh, you know, even taking, you know, showing any interest in it. But, man, I, I think it would be awesome to have her uh, in here as well. If you were to just, just tell her this, that if, if she gets her license, gets in there, and starts uh, having uh, cues, uh, she'll have her own Facebook or uh, what is it, uh, YouTube channel, and uh, she'll get more likes and uh, subscribers than you ever thought you could. Just say it. <laughs> Yeah, I got the dog barking at the door, wanting to come back in. He's chilly. And uh, so I'm going to jump on out of here and let you uh, find somebody else. In any event, uh, you have a real good evening. And 7-3, uh, Kilo Golf 6, Yankee Victor Delta. All right, Hayden. I appreciate you coming back to the call. And I uh, enjoy uh, catching up with you again. Uh, Y'all have a good evening over there in California, and uh, we'll catch you all out here again another time. Kilo Golf 6, Yankee Victor Delta, K4, L-E-N. 7-3 is my friend. Until next time. 7-3, K4, L-E-N, K-C-2, 7-5, Victor. Okay, G4, W-O-J. Yeah, everybody's coming out of the woodworks. Uh, I'm going to go with the first one I heard, uh, the Kilo Charlie 2 station. Come on back. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, this is KC2, Ray Delta. My name is Rod, Romeo Octa, Denmark. I'm in Long Island, New York, and I was listening to you uh, the QSO there. I was hearing the California station as well. You were coming in pretty well. Um, but uh, I got you about a 4-4. Four, 4-4 four. Four, four with uh, nice uh, audio. 4-4 four, four with nice audio. Uh, I'm just running a Kenwood TS-2000. I'm sorry, a 940 Sierra. <laughs> Uh, running uh, 100 watts into uh, an inverted L uh, up about 45 feet, QSL. QSL. Well, it's doing a, you a good job. Uh, I've got you a 4x4, four 5x5, by four, five by five, somewhere around in there. Uh, yeah, man, you, you're doing, a, doing your thing tonight. Sounds good down here in Tennessee for sure. Yeah, how was that station in California coming back to you? Go ahead. Yeah, he was a uh, solid uh, S8 on me, uh, five by eight. He uh, he's got a nice setup over there in California, and uh, yeah, he's a uh, he's a good solid good solid signal coming in on me. Uh, I've worked him before, and uh, when the conditions was a little bit better, and and uh, he's always been had a good strong signal in here in Tennessee for me. Okay, solid copy. Yeah, I noticed on this inverted L. I when I switch to my headset, I don't really get California that much. So, uh, 
make it out of the teens today. I think it got up to 20 there later this evening, but uh, but yeah, it's it's been cold and nasty. We had uh, we got probably an inch or so of just straight sleet on the road and in the grass and everywhere. Um, got a little bit of ice on the antenna, and I, I think it's, uh, uh, I had to use the tuner tonight on 40, so I, I normally don't have to do that, but yeah. Uh, nasty conditions, very cold, you know, a lot colder than what it normally is here. And uh, I don't know, I'm ready for this mess to get going in uh, springtime to start showing up, showing out. Yeah, they, uh, we're still under, uh, the mass stuff, uh, one thing here in uh, this little town I live in, um, about half the people wear a mask, half don't. Um, I don't know, I'm, I guess I'm one of the stubborn ones, I don't. Uh, I've had the corona, had a very mild case of it, uh, no complications whatsoever. And uh, I don't know, yeah, um, they recommend it, and maybe we're supposed to wear it, but uh, most places don't say nothing if you don't. Oh, sorry, of happy. Well, it's been very strict here. <laughs> well, it's very strict here. Even though the mayor, I mean, uh, the governor, even though the governor claims he's not forcing anybody, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of stores that you go into, uh, they'll still have you to wear it. You know, they'll force you. Because uh, I had my share of getting into it with the uh, supervisor, but, uh, you, know, uh, I was, you know, I still got my stuff, and he still called the cops, but by the time I was finished, you know, the cops pulled up, but uh, I tell you, this is crazy, uh, there's, there's no end to this thing, but anyway, uh, what is the name there, um, I, I think I gave you my name, my name is Rod, uh, Romeo Oxidemo. Yeah, Rod. Uh, yeah, you gave me your name, and uh, I don't know. Most of the time I do, but I forgot to this go around. But uh, yeah, the name here is Justin. Uh, Juliet Uniform Sierra Tango India November. Just in time. And uh, yeah, I'm down here, southern Middle Tennessee. I'm about 80 miles south of Nashville, and a little bit west of Nashville, southwest, and uh, about 20 miles north of the Alabama Tennessee line. So. Way down here at the bottom of the state, right in the middle of it. Nashville is a fun town. Uh, it's a, they know how to get down in Nashville. They, uh, man, that, that Broadway and uh, Second Avenue, man, that's a, that's a happening place. And uh, with all this COVID mess going on, they still let them open up the bars and all the honky tonks and everything. Uh, but they make them shut it down, I think, at 10 o'clock at night, and it may be 11. It's either 10 or 11 o'clock at night. And uh, so, yeah, they, uh, they've they tamed the city a little bit, but uh, there's still a lot of people that go downtown Nashville and have a good time. Oh, QSL, QSL. Um, are you born and raised in Tennessee, uh, Tennessee uh, Justin? 
I am. Uh, I've lived here all my life, uh, except for about three years right out of high school. I went to Northern Virginia, up in uh, Ashburn, Virginia. Lived up there, worked, um, done a lot of utilities on a big uh, country club up there. Uh, but other than that, I've lived here all my life there. Appreciate you coming back to the call. Hey, if you want to see how that radio sounding down here in Tennessee, uh, you can check me out on YouTube. I'm live streaming right now, and uh, you can check me out at K4LEN Radio. And uh, yeah, I'm live streaming on YouTube. You can sound it, see exactly how that uh, Kenwood radio sounding down here in Tennessee. Uh, I'm an hour and uh, 51 minutes into tonight's live stream, so if you don't get there tonight and want to go check it out some other time, uh, you just look for today's date and uh, live streaming on YouTube. And, uh, yeah, you can see exactly how you sound. But I uh, appreciate you coming back to the call. Look forward to working you again here in the near future. Kilo Charlie 2, Lima, X-Ray Delta, Kilo 4, Lima, Echo November. Seven threes, my friend, and until uh, we meet again. friend i greatly appreciate it yeah you get that uh 2000 back online we'll compare audio and uh see which one you like better uh thanks for stopping by look forward to working you again here in the near future uh it's k4len call us cq 40 meters cq 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 40 meters k4len call in any station anywhere qrz Kilo 5, Italy, Italy, Germany, Italy. Uh, I've got about a 4x4 four four on you. Uh, this is K4LEN. The name here is Justin. I'm in southern middle Tennessee. Good evening to you. Well, good evening to you, Justin. I'm in Gary, I think you handed it back to me. Uh, the band kind of dropped out from under you there a little bit. Uh, started off pretty good and strong and uh, just kind of faded down to almost nothing there. Uh, but yeah, uh, I see that you're in Cypress, Texas. And uh, yeah, it's uh, the band tonight is kind of up and down and uh, rough and tough. And then it'll come in pretty good for a little bit. So it's kind of hit or miss, if you will. And uh, if you want to try that again, I think you just tell me what you're running. But uh, like I said, the band kind of dropped out from under you there. If you want to come back.
right, Gary. I got that you was on emergency power and was without power right now. That's about all I could pull out from you. Uh, I hope you're not uh, experiencing the, the cold weather that we're experiencing here in Middle Tennessee. And uh, especially without power, man, that's, that would be rough. be very rough. Uh, current conditions here is, uh, last I checked, I think 14 degrees. It looks like it's 14 and hit and holding uh, feels like eight uh, extremely cold and I hope that you're not experiencing this uh, same conditions we've got with no power in Texas Okay, I, I'm not sure. You kind of up and down. I catch about the middle of the of your go around. And uh, man, I hope you stay warm. I hope you've got heaters and good way uh, to stay warm. Cause uh, I I caught that it was 17 degrees. And uh, man, I, I I pray for you and, and I hope things get better. I know no power at 17 degrees uh, could be. Uh, turn into a serious situation real quick um, but I like I said I, I'm having trouble pulling you out and uh, uh, hopefully hopefully everything turns out okay and they get you some uh, power turned back on here soon uh, I know that that can be bad could turn into a bad situation real fast well, I changed antennas, so I don't know if this is any better or worse. Um, hit, you're hitting me with about a, oh, between a six and a seven, and I don't know what I'm getting you with, but uh, anyway, like I said, I'm barefoot. So, I'm going to say seven threes to you, and uh, we'll catch you again. I, I listen to this frequency often, so... You take care, stay warm, have a good evening. Seven threes to you, K5, IGI. Well, all right, you come way up that time. Uh, that second antenna you used, and it, it made a big difference. You come up from uh, uh, just about nothing to uh, about a uh, five or six, five or seven on me that time. So uh, that was a dramatic improvement. But... Uh, yeah, I copied everything you said that last go around. Uh, Roger that. This uh, this antenna is a relatively new antenna. I put it up just to because I could. <laughs> it's an alpha antenna, what they call an HF J pole, and it's uh, it's a sloper. It's uh, fed from the top. The feed point's about 35 feet in the air down to about 10 feet off the ground and uh, seems to work. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a dramatic improvement over the other one. Uh, so yeah, you've, you've jumped up on me and you've not dropped back down since. So, yeah, it uh, sounds like it's doing pretty good. Yeah, I've never heard of uh, HF J-Po. I'm going to have to look that up and check that out real quick. Uh, I didn't ever know they even made anything like that. Well, the key to it is the feed, uh, have the feed point up in the air and a very good choke on it so you don't get a lot of voltage. Um, anyway, Alpha Antenna, they make these antennas for the U.S. Army. Uh, advice from a National Guard guy that... Uh, is a radio operator, and he says they use them all the time out in the field. So, good enough for the Army, good enough for me. Over. Yeah, Roger that. Well, it's doing a good job for you. I was trying to. Uh, I see uh, like pictures of the uh, of, of it like wound up, but uh, which I guess it's kind of hard to get a good picture of a wire antenna. Uh, but man, it's uh, it was a big improvement over the other one, so. 
Uh, it's working and working pretty well there. Well, the ballon is pretty solid. I mean, it, uh, it's made to be out in the weather, let's say that. And the element, uh, there's two elements to it, and it's made out of industrial grade uh, lamp cord, believe it or not. And the doggone thing just works. And uh, I've got a multi band on here, so it's uh, 80 to 6 meters. And it seems to work best on 40. Well, roger that. Well, it's, uh, it's working good here tonight. Uh, most of the time, we've got a little ice, a lot of sleet, but... Uh, I guess I've got some ice on the antenna because most of the time I don't have to run a tuner on 40. It's my, I'm, near, I'm running a off-center fed dipole. And most of the time it's it's perfect. Can't get no better, uh, you know, without a tuner on 40. But tonight, it's, uh, when I turned it on, it was up uh, almost two to one SWR. So I, I used a tuner tonight, tuner down, but. Um, yeah, I guess I got some ice on it or something. I have to. I ain't even looked at it. I may need to go check it and see. Uh, maybe sagging or something a little more. Either way, though. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, you said you're uh, 17 degrees and no power. Uh, I'm. I'm hoping you got some kind of heat source. Oh yeah. We uh, we got a gas log lighter. And uh, I'm one of those little office fans. We put that little fan in front of the fireplace, and we closed up most of the house. I have a rig that I can run the blower. I have gas heat. I have a, a setup that I can run the blower and uh, the thermostat off the generator. But, you know, we really don't need it. At this point, uh, you know, we got the creatures and uh, the four-legged children and so on and so forth. And, you know, the XYL's out in the living room and I'm here in the shack. I don't have much heat here in the shack. I got a little uh, little 700 watt under the desk heater and that. Uh, my shack is 10 by 10, so it heats it up pretty well. So we're we're okay heat-wise, um, but the ice and the snow is what kind of did us in. Um, but I can tell you this: a couple hundred watts on my VHF um, Yagi defrosted it really quick. Yeah, Roger that. That's for sure. I've been hoping that. Uh, uh, well, I, I, I'm assuming that it's ice on the antenna, and I was hoping to uh, keep talking on it, and it might melt her down. But uh, uh, for the last two days, it's been like this, so uh, I may have a little extra sag in it than what it normally has, and uh, I may need to go out there and pull my ropes up and pull it a little tighter or something, but. Uh, but yeah, man, that's good to hear y'all got uh, good heat. Uh, got heat. You got your uh, ham radio. You got your family, it sounds like. So uh, hopefully they'll get your power going back soon. How long have you been without power? Working on 29 hours. Okay, roger that. Well, that's, uh, that's a long time without power. And uh, maybe they'll get y'all going back soon. Is that... Uh, is that uh, coming from that weather system that's supposed to be here to us come tomorrow evening? Uh, is that what uh, killed your power? Um, well, what killed the power it is uh, governmental ineptness is what killed the power. They have five power plants here in Texas that they took down for maintenance when they knew these storms were coming. Well, I can't say they took five of them down. One caught fire, so they had to shut that one down. It was a coal fire plant. And they shut two nuclear generating stations down at the very same time, which uh, supplies a good part of heat. 
and uh, oh, let's see, there's a couple up north they shut down, and so we lost 25 to 30 percent of the generation grid here in Texas, and Texas is not participant in the national grid, so we're all on our own here, and so. You know, I don't know what's the matter with these people that run this operation. Every time we get weather, they seem to screw up like this. Well, I heard that. Well, maybe they'll get y'all uh, back on the line here in the near future. I know uh, that could turn into a serious situation real quick. And uh, hopefully uh, the other residents of your area uh, are faring as well as what you are uh, I say that but you know it's uh, like I said that could turn into a serious situation real fast uh, Gary I'm live streaming on YouTube uh, if you wanted to go see how you sound here in Tennessee uh, whenever you get your power back on uh, like I said I'm on YouTube K4LEN Radio is the name of my YouTube channel and uh, you go and see how you uh, that battery power and uh, and um, how that system sounding on battery power. I'm a hour or two hours and six minutes into uh, tonight's live stream, so you can go back anytime, check it out, and uh, see how you sound in there. Okay, will do. K5 IGI for. License preservation, 10 plus, 12, one minute after anyway. Yeah, roger that, and that's K4LEN. Uh, but yeah, Gary, uh, I'm going to make a few more rounds. I think I had a couple more calling, as you were, and uh, we'll have to start wrapping this thing up here for too long. i got to go in for a couple hours tomorrow. Uh, go in, check the job out, and make sure we ain't got no traffic barrels out in the road, and uh, make sure we ain't got no unsafe uh, conditions for the public. Uh, we're construction, and we're doing some road work, and uh, go and make sure everything's still safe on the job site in the morning. So, 10 o'clock local time here, so I'm gonna have to be getting stern, getting ready for the bed here for too long. Four o'clock's gonna come early in the morning. Uh, but I appreciate you coming back to the call, and uh, like I said, I, I hope they get y'all's power um, fired back up here soon, and uh, that way uh, you don't have no trouble staying warm. But Kilo 5, India, Golf India, K4LEN, I say seven threes to you, and uh, you'll be in my prayer, sir. All right. I think it's a handle is Lynn. Or L E N. Anyway, uh, good to talk to you. Hope to talk to you again down the logbook. Uh, we're just hanging out here. Can't do anything. The roads are all iced over and everything. We're supposed to get some more freezing rain tonight. Um, I'm hoping this bypasses us, but you know how that works. Anyway, good to talk to you. Um, I'll stop by again sometime soon when we got power back and we can converse a little longer. Anyway, you take care. Stay warm. And you going out at 4 o'clock in the morning. But anyway, be safe. K5, IGI. Seven threes to you, Len. Yes, sir. And uh, there's a funny story to that. I got this vanity call. I got a vanity call sign and chose this one. And uh, the a lot of the uh, the you know call sign lookups are there. There's a few of them out there. I know it's more than one. Um, but K4LEN used to be Lynn from uh, North Carolina. Um, like I said, I got this call sign about three or four months ago now. And, uh, the name here is Justin, and uh, I'm in southern middle Tennessee, little town of Lawrenceburg, Tennessee. But, uh, but yeah, I get Lynn a lot, a whole lot. Uh, Lynn from North Carolina, but uh, maybe that uh, that system will get updated here sometime soon, and uh, 
which I don't mind it. It's, um, I've been called worse things, that's for sure. <laughs> But I appreciate you coming back to the call. I look forward to working you again here in the future, sir. Seven threes to you. Seventy threes, Justin. Eight five I G I. All right, uh, station calling. Uh, come back for me one more time. Coming for the R. Whiskey 4, Alpha Romeo Tango, is that correct? Whiskey 4, Alpha Romeo Tango? Can barely hear you. Whiskey 4, Alpha Romeo Tango, K4 LEN. Good evening. I can hear him, but I don't think he can hear me. All right, it's K4 LEN. Calling CQ, CQ, CQ. CQ 40 meters, CQ 40 meters. Kilo 4, Lima Echo November. Calling CQ 40 meters. K4 LEN. Calling any station anywhere. QRZ. ART. Whiskey Delta 4, Alpha Romeo Tango. CQ, CQ, CQ. Whiskey Delta 4, Alpha Romeo Tango, is that correct? I don't think he can hear me, but uh, maybe why he's calling CQ. Uh, it's Kilo 4, Lima Echo November, calling CQ 40 meters. CQ, 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 CQ 40 meters. K4 LEN, calling any station anywhere, QRZ. CQ, 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 CQ 40 meters, CQ 40 meters, it's Kilo 4, Lima, Echo, November, calling CQ 40 meters, K4, LEN, calling any station, anywhere, QRZ. start wrapping this thing up. Uh, appreciate everybody uh, dropping in saying hello tonight. Uh, looks like I had a... Uh, let me see. Let me click back over here and get a good idea of how many logs I've logged tonight. Eight. Eight contacts. Looks like that's kind of the going number. Eight. Um, but I'm going to go one more last call. Last call. Last call. Kilo 4, Lima, Echo, November, calling CQ, 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 CQ 40 meters, CQ 40 meters, K4, LEN, calling any station, anywhere, QRZ. Nothing heard, nothing heard. It's K4 LEN. Name here is Justin. Southern Middle Tennessee. 80 miles southwest of Nashville. When I say southwest of Nashville, I'm talking like south and just a little bit to the west. And uh, Nashville, Larchburg. I guess it'll help y'all can see. Nashville, Larchburg. Little rural town. Southern Middle Tennessee, about 20 miles north of the Alabama-Tennessee line. But this is K4LEN. I'm going to wrap this thing up right here. Appreciate all the contacts. Look forward to working y'all again. And uh, I'm about to head. Find something to put in my belly. Head for the bed. Four o'clock. It's going to be early. This is K4LEN. Well, uh, call her done for the night. Good night, everybody. God bless you. And, uh, 
Gary over in Texas, man, I keep you in my prayers. I hope, uh, hope everything works out great for you. That could turn into a serious situation real quick. There's K4LN. I'll be clearing down for the night. God bless everybody.